Minecraft's terrain generation. Something that has been wondered Whoa. about and gawked wow. at by almost everyone who plays it. There's a reason so many videos are about it. The whole point of this series was to show people that there's more to Minecraft than its terrain generation. But it still deserves an episode here. Most videos focus on one aspect, such as the noise values, the land and sea contrast, or the basic ideas of all the steps. This video gives a simplified but thorough explanation of the entire process. Let's learn more about these worlds. The Basic Surface This entire section's research is from Heinrich Nienberg, the guy who made Minecraft's terrain generation. Minecraft terrain generation in a nutshell. It might seem boring, but the process of making the basic air, stone, and water combo that is talked about so often is way more fascinating than many videos cover. Yes, in case you don't know, Minecraft starts out by generating its worlds out of only stone, air, and water. Most videos will explain to you Perlin noise, my favorite mathematical concept, which is when Ken Perlin decided to make a 2D sheet of random values that were smoothed out and could be infinitely zoomed in on using math. If you change these black to white colors to height for a terrain, you'll see it looks pretty cool, like mountains and valleys. Anything that's air below a certain point will be water instead, forming the sea. These videos will talk to you about how if you get a small, meaning it's rocky and random, Perlin height map and add it to a big, very smooth, but very tall one, it makes the terrain even better and more realistic. They stop at just saying that lots of layers later, the terrain is done, but that's old news. If Minecraft's terrain is only made through getting different heights, how are these overhangs, floating islands, and caves everywhere? Riddle me that, Batman. First, actually, I'd like to add something to the basic surface we have now. Heinrich Nienberg actually brought up a really good point. You don't get the cool cliffs, fjords, and hoodoos that you see everywhere in Minecraft with this simple height map stack. He revealed that whatever height value the height map gave, they would actually process it through an equation to make it more realistic. Take an f of x equals x line, just the diagonal line upwards. This is what it was using before, and x was the output of the Perlin stacks. What this new equation, though, will do is make some spots more flat, like towards the bottom middle, some spots shoot right up, like the upper middle, and the tops and bottoms be more flat. This makes it so the oceans have smoother bottoms at the deep parts. Beaches and plains right above sea levels are really flat. Parts that go up will do it more rapidly until a certain Y level, and once they get there, it will be very flat. This is how fjords that, despite looking cool, we all hate to climb in survival mode, are generated. Remember how I said I would cover overhangs and caves? This is how they are made. Perlin noise is a 2D as a sheet of whites, grays, and blacks. Using some equation-y stuff like this one, 3D Perlin equals Perlin noise of XY plus Perlin noise of YZ plus Perlin noise of XZ plus Perlin noise of YX plus Perlin noise of ZY plus Perlin noise of ZX divided by 6, you're able to make 3D Perlin noise. <laughs> Bottom half values are air, and top half values stone. Put this in your world, maybe even a few layers if you want, and make it more and more common the higher you get, which is called squashing, and boom! Cool overhangs, floating islands, and a few caves. Actually, two values. The height offset and the amounts of values are squashed are pretty much all you need. Hook this up to the height equation from earlier, you get the same thing as before, but with overhangs and stuff. For deeper caves, do the same thing, but instead of taking values closer to one end or the other for air or stone, do the values in the middle, and it looks pretty cool. After the basic surface is made, biomes are chosen. Biomes used to be chosen and the terrain would change to fit them, but it was decided that it would be better if the terrain was made and the biomes were chosen to fit them. There are three noise maps, which I actually talked about in the section about the basic surface. I just never mentioned their names. Continentalness is a large, varied map that controls mostly the ocean and land or the mountains. Erosion is a larger, more zoomed in map. Peaks and Valleys is a small map with lots of variety, controlling hills and stuff, and also helps a lot with rivers. In addition to these three noise maps which are used in the basic surface and in biomes, biomes use two more to decide which biomes go where. 
temperature, a very large map, which is just how hot or cold things are, and humidity, a medium-sized map used to control how wet or dry things are. Biomes are given different values of these, ranging from negative 1 to 1, and whichever biome fits the noise maps the best is chosen. For example, oceans have low continentalness, and deserts have high temperatures and low humidities. After a biome is chosen, dirt, grass, sand, and other biome-dependent surface blocks are added. Different blocks are chosen if they are underwater, usually gravel. Though some parts may have deeper or more shallow surface block subtypes. That's literally it. The simplest part of the terrain generation. Not so simple if you're making a custom biome that's not dirt and grass, though. Structures definitely deserve an episode of their own, so they'll be on next times, but structures are what's generated next. This is why Bastion remnants generated in basalt deltas get basalt all over them, because basalt clumps are technically terrain features. Next are the terrain features. Everything I'll say about them comes from the Minecraft wiki, which is a brilliant resource if you want true, confirmed facts about Minecraft. It could be hard to know which parts you want to read though, it could be helpful to see and hear what it's talking about rather than reading it. All of this is in my own words and may be less confusing. That said, I will skip over some information, so if you want to read the full of it, the link is in the description. Now that you know how the basic surface gets made, you need to know the details, because just having the basic surface is like eating pizza without the cheese and pepperoni. Just eating dough. It's sad. I'm sad. The first terrain features are actually calculated in the basic noise step. The cliffs, overhangs, hoodoos, and fjords I was talking about earlier are actually considered terrain features. The terrain features that do actually come after the structures, though, include erosions, spots where the surface is scraped off randomly to create this thing. I know many of us mistake these for lava pools and it can be really annoying during speedruns. These are actually the only terrain features present in every dimension. Strips. In some biomes, instead of every surface block just being one block, there are sections where other blocks can be generated. These include gravel strips and stony shores and calcite strips and stony peaks. Icebergs. Ice islands in frozen ocean biomes with noise made to be very tall and sudden. There is little or no 3D variation in these, but there is a bottom side and occasional caves. Carvers. Noodle-like caves, canyons, and water caves, among others. These replace old blocks with cave air or water. Finally, the most exciting and final step to Minecraft's terrain generation, the features. Everything in this section is also from a wiki page, links also in the description. Somehow different from the terrain features, these include many different things, but here are some of the most exciting examples. Forest rock. Ever wonder what those weird mossy cobblestone rocks are called? I found the official name. You're welcome. Freeze top layer. When blocks generate high enough in certain biomes, they get covered in snow and ice. This counts as a generated feature on Java Edition for some reason. Lava Lakes. Minecraft speedruns would all rely on ruined nether portals if these didn't exist. They could be found above and underground. I decided to go a little bit more in depth on this one, as the series is meant to be pretty deep. They generate above Y0 and in every overworld biome, except for the deep dark. They also spawn air pockets above them. That's literally all I found. Bonus chest. Chests full of, get this, bonus loot that also generate at spawn when the bonus chest option is enabled. Springs. Those random water or lava falls that you see on mountains. Sometimes in the side of a cliff, water or lava source blocks are placed. Or just ore patches. Sometimes they will be skipped over if exposed to air. Even though on the surface there's not really much to talk about, I can see them as being a future episode too. Delta. The one block deep lava patches you find in the basalt deltas. Basalt columns. The basalt junk also found in basalt deltas. Crazy. <laughs> Trees. Somehow the wiki makes this one sound boring. A feature consisting of logs and appropriate leaves. <laughs> sure. And finally. After a minute and a half of grazing over random features, we get to the cool one. The one that you all think of when imagining the features, besides trees. The vegetation. This includes grass, of course, but did you know that grass can even spawn in deep dark biomes? Good luck finding dirt to put it on. Flowers. 
different flowers can spawn in different patches and different biomes. From poppies and dandelions, which are able to spawn pretty much everywhere, to blue orchards, which can only spawn in swamps, to sunflowers, which can only spawn in sunflower plains, and one other biome. On bedrock condition, for some strange reason, sunflowers can actually spawn in ice spikes biomes, which is absolutely absurd. And finally, underwater. This includes seagrass, kelp, and sea pickles. And that's actually it. The Minecraft world is complete. Now you know enough about Minecraft's generation that you could code a simplified version. If you know how to code, that is. Join me next time to learn about Minecraft's naturally generated structures. Make sure to catch every episode live at 3pm central time. Awesome Player 98 out.